One of my favorite quotations from Blessed Chaminade is the following. It is for us an infinite honor to be like him by being a living expression of the life that he lived when he was among us. Now it is by Mary that this life is communicated to us. I just think that summarizes what being a Marianist is all about. Just as Mary brought Jesus to the world, we try to bring Jesus to the world, and we try to do that in several ways, through education, through retreat work, and by forming faith communities. We then try to bring that community into our schools, into our retreat houses, into the places where we conduct sodality meetings, so that these two become faith communities. We meet as, as a community for prayer, like when we do Lords and when we do Vespers and uh, Compline, evening prayer or night prayer, those, that's a chance for the community to actually, and I mean literally, breathe together. Because as each, each choir says its particular uh, uh, a strophe of the psalm, they have to breathe together because you get to start your breath at the beginning of the line and get to the end. It's a sort of a physical way of uh, sort of coming together to make uh, an appeal in our hearts to uh, Jesus, who's of course our, our Savior. And uh, when we can do it together, it strengthens each one of us. It, it couldn't get any better than that. It's a really wonderful thing. Rule of Life says this, our main purpose in life is the most faithful imitation of Jesus Christ, Son of God, become Son of Mary for the salvation of mankind. And I figure the only way you're going to get to know Jesus and imitate him is to talk to him like a friend. Prayer can be seen in a couple of ways. Um, prayer is, in one sense, um, me in conversation with God. But it's also, in a broader sense, the community coming together to be in communion with God. So we're, commun we're individually uh, raising our voices to God, and then as a group we're raising our voices to God. And um, in scripture it says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So the idea of having communal prayer go, goes back well, to the early days of the church, of course. But it's also Jesus' own words that um, ideally we would be um, together when we're praying, because Christ is with us in a special way that way. The rhythm of the day should be punctuated by prayer so that um, Christ is never far from our minds. If I had to describe my life at all, it'd be in one word, which is Mary. When I met the Marianists, of course the whole idea of Mary, Marianists, they're dedicated to the Blessed Virgin, then I have to answer to myself, I have to ask myself the question and answer the question, what does that mean? We would say in religious life, to Jesus through Mary. So as long as I'm on that path, as long as I'm trusting Mary, then there's no way I'm not be, be moving toward Jesus. If I died and uh, you know, God said, okay, you did okay, but you gotta go back again, uh, what would you wanna do? Come back as a Marianist. I haven't regretted a single day of the 60 years as a Marianist. This is Our Lady of Saint Jehovah the most important image, icon, of Mary in Poland. And what is important for me with her is that when I was growing up, my family had a devotion to Mary. Very often when my family would pray, we would pray before the icon. She's still a part of my life uh, because when I do pray, basically pray in Polish. And part of it is not to forget the language, but also it encourages my uh, Marian devotion. The Blessed Virgin is ever present in our prayer life, our daily prayer life. Uh, we have our consecration, uh, our, our consecration of the Blessed Virgin every day. We say it at the end of our common prayer together. And then each of the brothers will have their own personal devotions to her as well. I personally have a devotion to Our Lady Undoer of Knots. She's ever present, ever guiding, um, always leading us closer to her son. I would say 
is one of those ways that she's always in the back of our minds, even if Mary isn't necessarily every word on our lips, you know, she's always carried in our hearts. Father Chaminade said that the biggest problem that he faced was not so much the social change of the revolution, but the indifference of so many people to the gospel, to living a moral life. And it strikes me that that's very much today. Um, we live in a time of change, of upheaval, but the real big problem is indifference. People just don't care. And so what we try to do as Marianists in our schools and our works around the world is to help people to learn how to care, help them to see what's important, how they can grow into a, a vibrant, dynamic human person who is in the image of God and who is a follower of Jesus Christ. What Father Shaman wanted was that the religious orders that he founded, that they would be at the center of the works, not necessarily running them completely. He always counted on the collaboration of many, many lay people in his works, but that the brothers, the sisters, would be sort of the symbolic center, the community at the center of the community, who would live a life of witness and example of what it means to, to follow the gospel, to give yourself to Jesus Christ. I think the gospel has always been sort of countercultural. The gospel proposes a different way of living, different from first century Roman Empire, different from 18th century France, different from 20th first century New York. Um, we want to be seen as being different. We want to be people who propose a different way of living. And so everything about the way we live tries to say that. Father Chaminade envisioned a unique congregation of brothers and priests living and working together as one, as one family. In some other religious communities, there might be different branches of separate orders of brothers and separate orders of priests. But for us, it's one family working together as brothers. Uh, 14 years ago, I made my first vows as a Marianist brother in this chapel. And uh, September 12th, 2004. And now uh, August 19th, 2018, I'll be saying uh, the Eucharist here in this chapel. It's the great thing about being a Marianist priest is you are always a brother. You never stop being a brother. You're a brother first and a brother always. So I'm a brother who is called to be ordained to serve my fellow brothers first and then the apostolate that we help uh, in the church. Our vocation as Marianists is uh, people oriented. So, you know, even our formation in our province is uh, based in community life. So I think a lot of our discernment uh, in community is helped and guided by being around others. The Marinists wear a religious garb that identifies them. It identifies them as individuals that give solace to those seeking spiritual comfort. The habit is also important for those that wear it. It has been traditionally understood as a sign of our religious consecration. We are permanently committed to God. We wear not distinctive elitist garb that sets us apart. It is a simple business suit that most professionals wear. It's just in black. I am meant to be a brother to my students and that they can look to me as a brother in Christ. It's a great joy for us to be brothers together in community, but then also to share that life with our students. They bring so much enjoyment and fun into our lives that it's a, it's a great blessing to be a brother and to live in a kind of countercultural way, to stand up a little bit and say that this is important to me because I think it's important for everybody that Jesus cares and deeply knows them. Our lives, a life of faith is not a boring, you know, life. It's, it's an exciting life because God came to give us joy, he tells us in the gospel, right? And so if he did, then our lives are meant to be animated with the love of Christ, that it's fun, that we enjoy being together, that our lives are meant for greatness. Since entering into the community um, several years ago now, um, it's sort of surprising to see um, how much like a family it is, in the sense that 
um, you know, sure, we all help with the dishes or we all um, will help set up the chapel for our different prayer services. We each have, you know, something to do there. But um, it feels very much like a family. What Marinus community is, what a Marinus religious life is, is that we are the body of Christ and we spur each other on, we lift each other up and uh, each one of us become more of a, uh, more, more Christ-like. We, we take those baptismal promises that we have and we put it a little, uh, uh, a little stronger in poverty, chastity, obedience, and our last vow, of course, stability. I hope that we're a light, a beacon, uh, to live out the gospel more closely. Um, I would hope that we are a, a visible sign of the way the gospel should, we, should be lived. Uh, that's, that's my vision, that's my hope, that's my desire. Each brother contributes whatever talents they have, and as they're young brothers, we encourage them to develop a specific talent. So some of our young brothers now are being trained in carpentry. Some brothers put down carpet, some brothers paint. So we find ourselves in the Benedictine tradition of the monastery, St. Benedict, who had a Latin phrase, ora et labora. So ora means prayer, so we spend a good part of our day in prayer, and labora means work. So we live by the work of our hands. I think the fact that the brothers do work on our properties, our schools, our retreat houses, uh, shows the people that we are very deeply invested in what we are doing. You know, as school begins to wind down, we are, like any family, coming together at the end of the day and we have to eat and someone cooks and someone prepares. This is a side, sort of the interior side of the community life that a lot of people don't, you know, understandably don't get to see, you know, where they more see us in our roles as religious running and teaching in the classroom. But it's this other whole aspect of our life, which is the community life, that's part of our vocation and really is the source of our strength to do that all that we can do. I love creating meals that other people can enjoy. So we use a phrase in religious life called reciprocal services. So a service that I can provide for the brothers would be preparing a meal and, and helping to run the kitchen, whereas some of the other services that enhance my community life, some of the other brothers provide that, whether it's uh, woodworking, or whether it's financial matters, and keeping you know, the books in order, and uh, doing other shopping that need, that's needed to keep a house running. We sort of all add to the community life with the gifts that we have. Mary's education is really all about relationship. Uh, Mary created a beautiful home for her, the Holy Family, and that's what we're trying to do with schools, to create a beautiful home, a beautiful place for students to grow and to mature. It's all about relationships, and the goal is that at the end of their time with us, uh, through school, that they will be true disciples of Jesus Christ, be able to bear witness to Christ in the world, and to create those uh, holy relationships uh, with others outside of the school. I come from a family of nine children, so in an Italian family, family has always been a part of my life and my uh, upbringing, and I always wanted to have a big family, so now I have a huge family at school, all these students at the school, but it's an extension of who I am and who my family life is, and, and to be a Marianist and carrying on that mission of Blessed Shamanite in this environment of a family, helping to create a family and forming these young men has really been a fulfillment of my goals and what I think God has called me to do is live in a bigger family now, the Marianist family. Blessed Shamanist philosophy of education was that it was the whole person you want to educate, the mind, the heart, and the soul. And therefore everything in a Marianist school is centered on that, whether it's the academics, the activities, the athletics, it's to nurture and develop the whole person, mind, heart, body, and soul. St. Martin's is our elementary school for the province of Mariba. 15 years ago, um, the parish and the diocese were ready to close down the school. So there had been no opportunity for a Catholic education uh, in this area at all. And this is a, an, an area, a very ethnically diverse area, uh, where it's important to have uh, that Catholic education. Uh, the Hispanic community is very faith-filled. Uh, so for them not to have a school to go to would have been a very uh, unfortunate. But I teach science from the very point of view and for the emphasis about how God made this beautiful universe that we live in, and that His hand could be seen in practically everything that we look into. Look outside and that's God's creation, that is, that's His artwork. Science is studying the art of God. 
Blessed Chaminade was very much supportive of that. So uh, in the schools themselves, uh, back in the 1800s, he would have been very encouraging for the brothers to teach a wide range of subjects. So I look back on the teachers that I had when I was in school. Uh, I don't remember the vast majority of what they said. I can tell you, though, the name of every teacher that I had here at Chaminade over four years. I know that although I have to take seriously the uh, academic material that I'm presenting in class, in the back of my mind I also know that's not what they're going to remember 30, 40, 20 years from now. They're going to remember what kind of a person I was. Uh, was I kind? Was I understanding? Uh, was I patient? Did I show Jesus Christ and Our Lady to them? A significant part of our culture today, not our entire culture, but a significant part of our culture tells us that life is about ease and comfort. I don't think that's true. I don't think life is about ease and comfort. I think life is meant for heroism. I think life is meant for spending yourself in some worthy cause. And to me, that's what religious life is all about. I've been very blessed for the last 40 years of my own life to be a part of the Marianists and to be able to spend myself along with my fellow brothers in pursuit of some worthy cause, a cause no less worthy than communicating Jesus to everyone we meet, just as Mary, our Blessed Mother, brought Jesus to everyone that she met, brought Jesus to the world. If young people are listening to this, I would urge them not to think small, but to think big. Don't think about what's ease and comfort. Don't think about necessarily what's going to bring me the, the most luxurious lifestyle. Don't think about what's going to earn me the biggest income. Think about what's going to bring me the deepest satisfaction. And what's going to bring me the deepest satisfaction, what's going to bring you the deepest satisfaction, is devoting yourself to something bigger than yourself. And what could be bigger? What could be bigger than evangelizing the world with the saving message of Jesus Christ himself? <laughs>